good morning and God bless you. Welcome to the worship room. I pray that you have come for a move of God. In the worship room, we know that we can never predict what God is going to do. I want everyone, whether you're on YouTube, Facebook, or the portal, to simply say, good morning, God. Hallelujah. And I sense something unusual. And so we're starting this service upside down this morning. I'm going right into the word of the Lord. Those who come in late might miss what God is doing. And so I want you to say that. Tell God good morning. Some of you woke up, went right to your phone. Some of you went right to what you were going to do for the day. Some of you got up and put a pot of beans on for the day. You put your greens on for the day. But let's kiss God good morning. For this is the day. Woo! This is the day that he has made. Come on here. And it is a choice to rejoice. Hallelujah. It is not out of duty. Hey, it's not out of obligation. For many of you, this weekend was a shifting Saturday. Things shifted in your life and you did not even know it. So I want you all, hey, from your belly to simply say, good morning, God. I kiss you. Come on here. I kiss you this morning, God. I exalt you this morning, God. And so this morning, as you can already see, <laughs> we're doing something different this morning because anytime, Prophetess Alicia, we can predict that he has to move in a building. He has to move with prayer and two worship songs. He has to work um, in our understanding. Then we limit creative miracles from taking place. Hallelujah. And I dare 50 of you real quick to simply say, I need a creative miracle. And so when we need creative miracle, I'm already in a place. I didn't come to Pump and Prime. I pray that you can jump in the river of what we're doing. But there are some of you, whoo, upon the sound of my voice, you are in need for something only God can do. Come on here. You've tried man. Hey, you've tried medicine. You've tried exercise. You've tried people. You've tried doctors. This one's on God. Hey, come on here. And this is what excited me this morning. And literally, if I be honest, media team, this is what made me change the order of our service this morning. God whispered this in my ear. He said, tell my people that this one is on me. God have mercy. He said, tell my people that this one is on me. And then he said one other statement, Sister Zakia. He said, tell them I'm in the mood to do it. God have mercy. May not mean much to you. Come on here. But I almost lost it, Mima, when God told me that. He said, tell them, hey, come on here. I'm in the mood to do it. And God being in the mood to do whatever it is you need him to do is the only ingredients that is necessary. So I dare a few of you to simply say, so do it, God. So do it, God. So do it, God. So do it, God. I know I'm disrupting some of you's normal some Sunday uh, program and, and you know what? I ain't against programs, but I need a miracle this morning. And there are many of you upon the sound of my voice, hey, that need a miracle this morning. And so I pray that wherever you worship this morning, that the program that they have does not override God's agenda in an atmosphere. It is about atmosphere, Sister Janice. We need miracles in this day and time. We don't need just two beautiful songs and the preacher come up with his beautiful message and it's more about him preparing for the message than you getting a breakthrough. I heard the Lord tell me to tell you, hey, I'm in the mood to do it. So I need everyone, whatever platform you're on, to simply say, eh, do it, God. Do it, God. This feels a bit like the inner circle this morning, but I'm okay with it. Come on here. There is a miracle in this atmosphere, and I decree and I declare that by the end of this service, come on here, there will be miracles in this atmosphere. You will have walked away. Somebody say, with everything you need, God have mercy. Come on here. With everything you need, you would have walked away with from this broadcast this morning. And so for those of you who may not know me, my name is Marcus. God have mercy. And I count it as an honor, hey, to be the one who leads you in to the presence of God Sunday after Sunday. It is an opportunity to be the one that God has handpicked to lead this body of believers, come on here, into the promise. Hey, and I dare a few of you that have been praying for things to come to pass in your life to simply say this, 
and the promise still stands. God have mercy. I feel an anointing in here, Pastor Erica. And the promise of God huh, still stands in my life. And because of how he loves us, he's getting ready as only he can do to accelerate everything in our lives. Come on here at one time. Who told you he couldn't change it all at one time? Who told you he had to do it one by one? We decree and declare that everything is getting ready to shift in our life. Watch this, because of how we believe God. So be so kind. If you have not already, share this broadcast out. Write a few people's name in the Facebook chat box and bring them in the room. If you can share this on your Facebook page, I need you all to help me this morning. We're literally not going to be before you long this morning because this is an impartation. And I'm going to do like one of my spiritual daughters do. This is going to be a drive-by. You can catch it, roll the window down and eat it if you want to or not. Roll it up, keep on rolling and get what it is you need from elsewhere. But this morning, God has given me a word. And if you grab a hold of this word, Miss Rosalind, everything in our lives is about to change. I feel a glory. Hey, if you feel, I see you, uh, prophetess, uh, uh, a dealer. I see you, daughter. If you sense the presence of God like I do, I want you to do two things. I want you to share. I want you to invite someone in this atmosphere, whether you're on Facebook, share it on your, your pages. Some of us, we share everything. We share about cooking. We share about gardening. Share your ministry broadcast on your page this morning. If you don't mind, please, kindly, and thank you. Share this out. And if you feel the presence of God like I do, I want you to put those flames of fire on the screen. And we are literally going right into the word of the Lord. Come on, the oven is on this morning. <laughs> All you have to do is put your pot on the oven. Come on, put your pot on the oven and whatever, oh, this is prophetic, and whatever you have in the pot is going to cook and it will be cooked well this morning. Hi, huh? Somebody just say well. Come on, and it will be cooked well this morning in Jesus' name. All right, I'm ready to go. So we've been in this amazing series entitled acceleration i need everyone to yell that acceleration we have literally not stepped into a season but pastor brody we've stepped into a place and because we've come into agreement with this place that god has for us he's allowing us to experience what is known as a habitation of Amos 9. God have mercy. Woo! This is a habitation. This is when a place drops on your life and it's not a season because it will not end. Huh? I pray you can grab this prophetic word this morning, but this is a habitation. This is something that will live in your life. Credit score continually going up. Healing continuously manifests in your life. Come on, relationships continually getting better. Your career and opportunities and promotion, all always looking for you for it is the will of the father to continuously accelerate you and so what is this place called pastor erica this is our habitation of amos 9 and so it was cliche as a couple years ago for people to say amos 9 and things are going to happen so fast god brought me back to a word and told me to tell you all that Amos 9 is more than a word. It's more than a season. Huh? It's more than an opportunity. It's more than something you use when you need a pro promotion at your job. It's more than something that you need when you want to shift out of something and into something new. Amos 9 is a place called habitation of Amos 9 experience. And so let's go right into that word. Amos 9. The message translation. And let's dig into 13 through 15. And I'm going to grab one part at the end. And that's what we're going to teach from this morning. Can we flow this morning? Thank you all so much. You're doing an awesome job with sharing and inviting. Yes, indeed. I dare somebody say yes, indeed. Because for some of you, you've been getting um, repetitive no's. 
But God's getting ready to send your yes, huh? You're one conversation away from your yes, huh? You're one meeting away from your yes, huh? You're one seat at the table away from your yes. Come on here. You're one opportunity away from your yes. Come on here. You're one prayer away from uh, your yes from God. And so God is about to give you a yes because you've grown too accustomed with hearing no from God. And so what do you do? When your life has become accustomed to know, but God says, yes, indeed. This is a promise. <laughs> this is a covenant. This is something you can take to the bank. This is a covenant God makes, and it is an inheritance from God. <laughs> yes, indeed. It won't be long for some of you who have been in trials and circumstances and situations for way too long. God's decree. And so when God makes a decree, it cannot be otherwise. When God makes a decree, you can take it to the bank and it does not matter what anything else looks like. And then it says this, things are going to happen so fast that your head will swim. One thing fast on the heels of the other. <laughs> you won't be able, hey, to keep up. Some of you have been, you've grown accustomed to a speed called slow. Hey, you won't be able to keep up, so you'll need to keep your seatbelt on. Huh? You'll need to wear your helmet. Come on here. You'll need shoulder pads and knee pads, and you'll need someone to take the steering wheel in case the car lose control. I'll deal with that another Sunday. Everything will be happening at once. And everywhere you look, as long as you don't allow the devil to close your eyes, or as long as you don't allow the, the devil to clog up your ears, as long as you don't let the wrong things in your eye gates and in your ear gates, because some of you are watching things that don't, don't benefit you, and some of you are listening to people who can't even hear the voice of God. I ain't going to deal with y'all's y'all y'all's wise counsel this morning. Blessings, come on here, like wine pouring off of the mountains and hills. And here's what I like right through here, Miss Rosalind. I'll make everything right again for my people, Israel. And then here it is. They'll rebuild their ruined cities. In this series of acceleration, I drove my car by this morning on Worship Room Avenue to simply tell you that he is about to rebuild you. How can he accelerate everything in your life <laughs> and skip over you? Basha. Some of you asking God for a new house, but if you get in the house, it'll become a broken house because we're on broken pieces. This morning, our subtitle, hey, is God rebuild me. The quickest way to sabotage an old season, hey, is to bring your broken, wounded, bitter self, come on here, broken in pieces self, into a new place of habitation of Amos 9. And so God says this morning, I don't want you to get the blessing and ruin the blessing. Hey, because you were ready, but now you're broken. Hey, and sometimes when you've been in situations and circumstances for way too long, you become broken. And what people have mastered, Pastor Brody, is how to operate off of broken pieces. And this morning, hey, I want, that's it, daughter. Come on here. See, daughters know, sons and daughters know how to respond. I need every son and daughter or every person listening to simply say, God, rebuild me. I don't want you to accelerate my life and then my hurt and my bitterness ruin what you're trying to walk me into. And for some of you, he's going to push you into it. I'll come out of it. God, rebuild every broken part of us this morning. I don't want to get to my promise. I don't want my spouse to come. I don't want my new business partners to come. And then Sister Brianna, I run them away because I'm still in need for him to re re rebuild how I trust people. And so here it is. <laughs> God is literally in this place of him rebuilding us. Can I say this and y'all y'all understand it? Here it is, Sister Tanya. Some of us have gone through so much warfare, so much bad news, so many unfortunate circumstances that we literally need, everybody write this, a creative miracle. Creative miracles happen through three steps in our life. The first thing, if you're going to experience continuous creative miracles, this is where God continuously does stuff in your life because of acceleration, time after time, week after week, month after month. 
The first thing you have to learn to experience creative miracles is you have to learn the apostolic strategy of binding and loosening. God have mercy. And so here's what we do, and this is very practical. I bind up poverty. I bind up bad relationships. I bind up people stealing from me. I bind up the devil. And one of the mistakes we make, and this is an apostolic strategy and principle, if I bind it, watch this prophetess Patrice daughter, if I bind it, but I don't loose heaven in that place, then I still end up wounded. <laughs> I still end up empty. I still end up disappointed. And so one of the principles for you allowing and positioning yourself to be a conduit for creative miracles is I must master the principle of binding and loosing. And so if I bind up poverty, I must loose wealth. Come on here. If I bind up sickness, come on here, then I must loose healing. Come on here. If I bind up bad relationships and people that, 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 that operate in witchcraft, come on here, and black magic and necromancy and all those types of, of divination, then I must also loose in my life people that mean me no harm. And so the first step to creative miracles as we are on our journey to God rebuilding us, woo, come on, somebody just shout, God rebuild me, is I must learn the apostolic principle and strategy of binding and loosing. And then the second principle is that I must learn, I hope I'm helping you this morning, Cousin Shirley, I must learn how to live, here it is, from the third heaven. <laughs> woo! I must teach myself, my environment, my children, my seed, come on, my spouse, my friends, and my family, that I do not live from the place of the first and the second heaven. But I live and I come into agreement and because I can have whatever I say, because I understand that I am a speaking spirit, I understand that my world becomes what I say because of what I see. God have mercy. My world becomes a manifestation. Somebody better grab this. In real time, hey, I can have what I say because of what I see. Come on here and walk with me this morning. And so we must master living from the third heaven. We must come to a place of understanding, hey, that my world becomes whatever comes out of my mouth. What's been coming out of your mouth? Have you been speaking doubt? Have you been speaking defeat? Have you been coming into agreement with your circumstance because you need a violin? Woe is unto you and how sad your life is and how much you have lost. Let me say this with all due respect. Sometimes, hey, it does not matter about anything you've gone through. God can bless you so good, Pastor Kadisha, that whatever you've experienced before that moment, it doesn't even matter. God can allow doors to open in your life and you forget about every person that walked away because their season ended. Oh God, I'll leave that alone. These seasonal people. Get what they need, get everything from you, suck you like a leech, and then go on to the next person. God is getting ready to kill out that parasite spirit in people, especially apostles and prophets. We should not be using people like they are insurance policy. And now in our trainers, we have to train leaders how to get used to people using you and you just becoming something they walk on because the motive of a man's heart. So you must learn, hey, how to live from the third heaven. Somebody shout this on the screen. I'm living from the third heaven. I'm not living from a secular dimension. I'm not living from a place of defeat. Huh. I'm not living from the place of my diagnosis. Hey, I'm not living from the place of bad relationships. I'm not living according to how much money is in the bank. And I sure ain't living according to my credit score. I am living according, hey, to the third heaven. And so third heaven, can you show yourself to us <laughs> so that we can accelerate? The posture that we live from, op, it, the posture that we live from dictates everything we obtain while we are living. The third step to you experiencing creative miracles is you must learn how to prophesy the word in your life. Some of you say, I'm not a prophet. You don't have to be a prophet eh, to prophesy the word in your life. Third step, I want you to write that on the screen. I must prophesy the word, not what I see, 
not what mom and them taught me, not what daddy and them taught me, but I must learn to prophesy the word. And so this is why in my minister's class, I'm trying to get them, here it is, to read one scripture a day. If you know the word enough, watch this, the word will begin to know you. I'll come out of that. Woo! If you know the word enough, ha, the word becomes your cousin. Ha. And even when, when you know God's word, when you're committed to, to, to reading your word like you are checking your text messages, when you are committed to the word like you are committed to knowing your Instagram status, or when you are committed to the word like you are committed to your job, because you don't skip that. Woo! You don't forget to do that. <laughs> you don't forget to check your bank account. God is drawing us back to a place because he literally wants and desires for us to experience. Hey, everybody write this. A lifestyle of creative miracles. Why is creative miracles important this morning? Your life cannot accelerate if you do not experience miracles. Miracles is a part of the Amos 9. Things should not happen in a way that you understand. There should be so many wonderful, unpredictable things that are happening in this season of your life so that you will know verifiably that this place that I am in is only a place that God could have done. I need everyone, no matter what platform you're on, to simply say these two words, only God, yeah. only God, only God, only God. I'll give you seven points and I'm done this morning and we're going to do communion and we're going to sow and I'm going to let you enjoy your, sat your Sunday because something prolific and something apostolic is happening with those who are truly connected to the worship room. All right, here it is. When you need God to rebuild your life, the first thing he does, Sade, is this. He will disrupt the stability of your life. Huh. Yeah. So some of you thought you were going through what you're going through because God wasn't happy. But the first thing that happens in your life when God is rebuilding you, when we look at Amos 9, the rebuilding of the ruins of that city was a part of the Amos 9. And so if God can't rebuild you, woo, then he cannot accelerate you. Prophet Adela, I hear this. If he cannot break you down and bring you down to bring you high, then he cannot fast forward and accelerate things in your life. And so if God, and he is, if he's going to rebuild you, then you're going to have to grow accustomed, watch this, to God disrupting stability and peace in your life. What if I were to tell you that the last disruption in your life, come on here, the last severing of a relationship, woo, the last firing of a job, God have mercy, the last time somebody walked out of your life was literally God positioning you to rebuild your life. Woo! So he disrupts your stability first. <laughs> Somebody say yes. Somebody say yes. He disrupts the thing that you depend upon more than him. Because some of us don't praise and dance and give and sow unless we got plenty of money. But what happens when you have to tithe your last $20? Y'all ain't talking back to me. What happens when he tells you to walk away from someone that you thought your life couldn't uh, move forward without? God have mercy. And so when God is rebuilding you, Sister Tanya, he literally, ah, come on here. He disrupts your life. He disrupts your plan. He disrupts the way you thought he was going to do it because some of us think we're smarter than God. And so we put God in a box and we say, God, I'll go with you if you do it like this. I'll go with you if you use these people. I'll go with you if I can afford it. And so God is disrupting our life first so that he can recreate our life all over again. The second thing God does huh, when he wants to rebuild us is you need to begin to give parts and pieces of yourself to someone else in need. But watch this. And even if the pieces that are broken that you are giving away to yourself, someone can live off of your broken pieces. You're not as broken as you think. Yeah. I want you to hear that. When you need God to rebuild you, 
You have to find a part of you to serve. Come on here. You're in a place of being rebuilt, but you must still serve in your community. Huh? You're not too broken to serve. You're going to work, ain't you? Uh-oh, come on here. Come on here. You're going to do fun things with your family, ain't you? And one of the things about certain levels of brokenness, the devil will try to convince you that you're too broken to go serve in ministry, but you ain't too broken to go on vacation. I'll come out your business. Yeah, God have mercy. When God wants to, 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 to rebuild us, he makes us and he allows us to realize I'm not too broken to save someone else's life with my broken pieces. Uh, somebody say my broken pieces. Because as prophetic as you are and as strong as you are, there is a broken piece to every one of us. And this morning, God is saying, if you'll give me the broken pieces of you, I'll use them to save somebody else's life. And so what else does this mean? This means even on my worst day, even though I'm depressed, even though I'm discouraged, even though I don't know how I'm going to do this, my worst day is better than somebody's best day. Y'all better hear me this morning because huh? we get complaining and we fall into caves of depression and we want to be by ourselves and, and we isolate ourselves and, and we begin to switch seasons and switch people out like a t-shirt. My worst day yeah, is better than somebody's best day. God have mercy. I want y'all to hear that. God, it could be worse. And so there's a thankfulness and there's a gratefulness I have because whereas I just want a new car, somebody don't have a car. Yeah. Whereas I just want three best friends or three good friends I can depend on, somebody don't have no friends. Huh. Somebody may say, I don't want to have to walk with a walker and somebody don't have legs to walk with. Good God have mercy. Somebody say, I want a bigger house. And somebody is homeless in the shelter. Somebody say, I want this kind of food. But somebody else is saying, I wish I just had food. Somebody saying, I want designer this and I want designer that. And somebody say, I take something from Walmart. Woo! We must go back to a place of being so grateful and being so thankful. How did we become this greedy? Woo! How did we become this selfish? God help our hearts. Bring back a gratefulness so that we are grateful for everything, Sister Brianna, that God allows us to have. And then the third step is don't try to predict what God is going to do next. I know you're prophetic, but you serve the God who invented the prophetic. Huh? And prophetic people, they get real crazy when they don't know what's next. But there's a place and there's a step in God rebuilding you where you lose access to what God is doing next because God wants to teach you how to trust him all over again. Everybody write this. I must trust God in a new way. If I know what he's doing next and I'm only trusting his history that I have, then I have to question, how well do I really trust God? And so the third step, I can't try to predict how God is going to do it, who he's going to do it, do it through. I just know that I need God to rebuild me. I just know I need God to heal broken parts of me. Hey, and then the fourth step. But I want you to write this in your notes if you're taking notes. The future belongs to God. It is a benefit and an opportunity that he allows us to be a part of the narrative. Yeah. My future belongs to God. My destiny has been preordained since the beginning of the time. When I was in the womb, woo, he knew what I'd become. <laughs> he knew the mandate he placed on my life. Our, I want you to get this, our future belongs to God. That's why there's so many school shootings. Because the devil is after our seed. He is after the future. And the devil knows the future belongs to God. So how can we not? God, whatever you want to do, I come into agreement. <laughs> I don't understand it. I have questions. But my future is bigger than me. So even the parts, the curveballs of our future, the stuff we didn't ask for, the stuff we dreaded, the stuff that is our greatest fear happening in our life, because we are believers, our future belongs to you. So God, we give you the now. All right, all right. 
the fourth step to him rebuilding you is he's going to teach you how to fill again huh, the correct way because you can go through so many circumstances you can go through so many disappointments that you lose your ability to fill did you lose your ability to fill what is the last thing you cried about Woo! what is the last thing you felt and because you felt it you prayed about it somebody say i'm about to fill again huh my heart in other words is going to break for the things that break god's heart huh? if he's against it i'm not going to be for it <laughs> if he doesn't like it i'm not going to find myself bosom buddies with it come on compromise because holiness is right clean living is still right and we know that righteous living always pays off and so some of you who i see this some of you to protect yourself you've allowed yourself to become numb and when you can't feel anything you also miss the opportunities to feel what is on the heart of god we are not so intellectual that we can compartmentalize how our heart feels things come out of that numbness it's time to feel oh i feel this for somebody <laughs> Come on here. You've protected yourself so you think long enough. It is time for you to feel the pain of your city. It is time for you to feel the pain of the people that are in your house. Some of you, when you go numb emotionally, when you go numb psychologically, the numbness also causes you to miss moments when God wants you to feel the heart of people. You're about to feel again. And so in this process of God rebuilding us, you begin to feel again. You begin to feel in process again, all right? And then the fifth step in this process is you're going to have to develop thick skin. Thick skin. Someone just say thick skin. Some of our skin is just too fragile. So in this place of God rebuilding you, they'll hurt you again, but you won't feel it the same. Woo! You'll be offended, but you won't hold on to it as long. God have mercy. And then last but not least, you'll actually be able to be corrected. Because some of us are good, Pastor Trina, until someone has to correct our spirit. <laughs> and then some of us are in an agreement until someone says something opposite of us. And then we have to jump ship and God then told us to do something different when it's our rebellion because we just really don't agree. Woo! So he's giving us thick skin so that he can rebuild us and I speak you being able to control your emotions just because you're prophetic doesn't have doesn't mean you have to be moody and all over the place and by morning time you happy by lunch time you mad by afternoon you don't want to be around nobody and then by dinner time because you hungry you want to be around everybody we break that moodiness off of prophetic people you don't have to be moody just because you are prophetic you don't have to be spooky just because you are prophetic. Prophetic means I am a messenger of Christ. It does not give me a license to be moody and disrespectful and sharp and clapping back and having an attitude just because we are prophetic. And then other people, whoo, I'm going to say this and move on. Prophet Zanisha, I'm going to say this and move on. And just because I am a prophetic person, other people don't have to have thick skin to deal with my attitude. All right. <clears throat> Just because I'm apostolic doesn't mean other people have to develop um, thick skin so that I don't break and shatter their life. I am prophetic, but I still must walk in love. I am prophetic, but I must allow the Holy Spirit to stabilize my emotions and, and my mood swings. And, and it's that time of the month, and so I don't deal with nobody. Nope, he's the God of that time of the month he's the god of the crisis like situation he's the god when nobody understands or knows what's going on so god is going to stabilize your emotions because you're okay as a person until your emotions get out of control and then you don't even know who you become i don't know who i'm talking to but i feel this you should not turn into a different person just because you've been offended so for some of you God is going to rebuild and to stabilize your emotions so you're not five and six different people. I'll come out of it. 
The sixth thing God is going to do as he's rebuilding you is you will begin to hear and you will begin to see God in new ways. The lens that you look at God through when you are broken and hurt and wounded is a different kind of lens that than the lens you look through when God has made you whole, when God is rebuilding you. Somebody say, in new ways. And so when he's rebuilding you, he rebuilds and he fortifies the way you see things. When he heals you and he rebuilds you and he delivers you, you begin to hear God, hey, in a new way. God have mercy. Open it up in a new way, God. I don't want to hear with old ears in a new season. I don't want to see with old, old eyes in a new season. I want to see the good in people. We don't want to meet people and remember all the things and ways that somebody hurt us because they are similar to that person. Yeah. God is wanting us to see and to hear in new ways. And last but not least, and here's the bomb I'm dropping and then we're going into communion. <laughs> Then God shows you that rebuilding your life had nothing to do with you at all, but everything to do with who you were building, what you were building for. Everybody write this. It was never about me. This seventh step, when God is rebuilding you and we're going into communion, this is a great place to go into communion. <laughs> you get to a place when you allow Abba to rebuild you, that you know and you become aware that it never was about me. This is what global influencers understand. That it was never about me, cousin Janice. Yeah. It was never about me, sister Brianna. It was never about me, sister Tanya. God have mercy. It was never about me. How did we fall in love with ourselves? Woo, God have mercy. How did everything we build become about our preferences and our likes, Sade? Yeah. You become aware that it was never about you. Write this on the screen and we're done. What I'm building is for them. Because if he can't rebuild you, then you cannot build it. Woo! And so some of us have been waiting on the release from God to do it. And God has been saying, I'll release you if I can rebuild you. Woo! I'll give you the property. I'll give you whatever you're asking for. I'll give you your heart's desire. And I'll make it come to pass. But I need you to become so low that you understand that it's not about you. God, deliver us from these selfish tendencies. Woo! Oh, that hurts right there. Deliver us from this mindset of nobody knows and I'm the worst going through this thing. Uh, it's not about me. We're put on this earth for the Great Commission. I want every one of you to grab a seat. We're going to sow and we're going to do communion. Woo! I feel a fire anointing in here. <laughs> he is rebuilding us so that he can accelerate you. Did you get something out of today's teaching? That's all I got. I'm going to stop and pick it up next week. Woo! If he can rebuild you, then he can accelerate you. So sometimes, woo, you have to stop praying for what you're building and ask God to build you back up. Come on here. We can't be ministering off of broken, shattered, and scattered pieces all the time. Every now and then, okay, I get it. But for the most part, God is going to have you to build from a healed place. All right, let's go right into our sowing time. There are four ways to sow. And we're not going to use the Marcus Rivers uh, Cash App, so media team, y'all have to take that offer there. We're going to sow to Worship Room Church. That is the Cash App we're using. We don't use Marcus Rivers Global on Sundays at all, all right? So there's four ways to sow. If this is your week to tithe, I want you to put your tithe in the ground. There are four ways to tithe if this is your tithing week. And I want everybody to say this, I am a tither. I want us all to say that. I am a tither. I am a tither. If this is your week to tithe, and then we understand this too. We tithe of all. Any kind of increase, any type of income, any type of salary. This is how we get on top and stay on top. So the first way to sow, many of you sow this way, is through the cash shop. It's Worship Room Church. 
If you desire to mail your financial seed, the address is in the right-hand corner. And then if you desire to do push pay, you can go to marcusrivers.org. And then there's always um, the PayPal as well, all right? I want everyone whose week it is to tithe, I want you to go and tithe at this time and then put done. And then I want everyone in this atmosphere to simply put a sacrificial seed in the ground. And you're going to call this seed your recovery seed. This seed is your way of saying thank you to God for allowing you to recover so that you can be restored and rebuild. He cannot accelerate what he cannot rebuild. And these new places that God brings us into always require something in our life to be built all over again. After you put, ooh, I feel a glory cloud in here, huh? After you've put your tithe in the ground, I want you to simply say done. After you've put your recovery seed in the ground, I want you to simply say done. You pick the seed amount, only you can pick this morning how much you thank God through your seed for him allowing you to recover. Cousin Janice, I touch and agree with you in Jesus' name. Sister Tanya, I touch and agree with you in Jesus' name. I bless God for every sower, every giver. God, we thank you that we are not a group of people who just take and eat and take and take and take and not give back to what feeds us. God, we thank you for the refuge that we have in the worship room. This is a safe place. Woo, he allowed me to heal here too. <laughs> I came broken. I came wounded. And so God, we take a moment and we give and we sow into this moment. We're calling this scene. I want everyone in here, if it's $20, if it's $10, whatever it is, you're going to call this your recovery seed. I'm going to give you 60 seconds and then we're going right into communion and we're out of here for the day. In Jesus' name. Prophet Zathila, I touch and agree with you. In Jesus' name. Sister Brianna, I touch and agree with you in Jesus' name. If you're on Facebook and you're sowing, I touch and agree with you in Jesus' name. God, we thank you. We thank you for the, the worship that happens when we give. God, we thank you for your anointing, for your presence, and we thank you for this time in his worship. Thank you, God. Thank you, Teacher Rosalind. Thank you so much, daughter. I touch and agree with you in Jesus' name. Father, we bless you. Father, we love you. And we dare not rob you of our giving, God. We, we give because we love you. We tithe because, God, you let us keep the 90. You just ask for 10% back. Pastor Brody, I touch and agree with you in Jesus' name. Bless every tither. Some of them are tithing sacrificially. Sometimes it'll hurt when you tithe. <laughs> So Zakia, we touch and agree with you in Jesus' name. Prophetess Alicia, I touch and agree with you, daughter, in Jesus' name. Pastor Erica, daughter, I touch and agree with you in Jesus' name. And God, we thank you this morning that you allow us to have the heart to give in Jesus' name. I want you to grab your communion elements. Grab your bread. Grab your juice. We're getting ready to take part in Holy Communion, all right? I want you to grab your elements. And I want you to prepare your heart. Even if you just have a piece of bread, even if you just have a little bit of water, I want whatever you grab to be symbolic of you taking part in Holy Communion. Somebody say the Holy Supper, the Last Supper, the Holy Supper. God, we thank you for your body. We thank you for the bruising and the gnashing. And, and here's what I always say when I do communion. He didn't have to do it. He could have changed his mind. Father, we thank you for the sacrifice of your body. This bread is symbolic of your body. Woo, the suffering, the loneliness you felt at the cross. Woo, <laughs> And I remember the words, if you can remove this, if it be thy will, remove this bitter cup. God, we thank you that you did not change your mind. I want you to take the bread and break it and eat. God, we take part in Holy Communion. And we don't live under the law to where if we don't take it, we get sick and all that. God, we just thank you that we are in covenant and we are in fellowship with you. And we thank you for what you allow to be available through us and to us 
through partaking and being a part of communion. Now I want you to lift your juice, whatever you have, if it be water, if it be wine, whatever you have. And I want you to say, God, I thank you for your blood. Without the lamb, woo, there'll be no remission of sins. Come on here, there'll be no forgiveness. God, we thank you for the blood. Your blood covers us, it purges us, it purifies us, and it redeems us. Thank you for your redemptive blood, what you did on Calvary's cross for us. I want you to take your communion juice now and drink. God, we thank you for allowing us to take part in Holy Communion. Father, we thank you for all that is taking place today. We worship you, God. Who I feel uh, uh, just, a, just a weeping in my spirit. God, we thank you for your sacrifice. We thank you for how you bled on Calvary's cross. God, never let us forgive, forget this moment. And then don't, don't let us crucify you afresh by making the same mistakes over and over and over again. Everyone upon the sound of my voice simply say, and it is so. In Jesus' name. I'm going to let you go right here. I pray that you have gotten everything that you've needed out of today's service. Join us tomorrow in Inner Circle at 8 p.m. This is the last Inner Circle for this month. And there is a word, there is a dynamic word from the Lord. And so please join us tomorrow at 8 p.m. for the Inner Circle. And also make sure that you are on the prayer line. The prayer line is every Monday and every Wednesday, all right, at 7.30 a.m. So make sure that you join us on the prayer line. If you don't have the calling information, go to marcusrivers.org and you can get the information to be a part of the prayer line, all right? I love you. God bless you. I pray that you got something out of today's message. Understand that the only way that he can rebuild your life, come on here, and the only way he can accelerate you is if he can rebuild you. So let him rebuild every broken, shattered area of your life so that he can rebuild you and accelerate you into a place called Habitation Amos 9 Experience. In Jesus' name, I love you. God bless you. And I'll see you all real soon right here in the worship room. In Jesus' name, God bless you. I love you. And shalom.